on the Thames I'd managed to overshoot the turn onto the Kennet and Avon. So, time to turn around. Join me. Notorious looks, crossweirs, drug use and threatening behaviour. What can possibly go wrong? I've heard a lot about the K&A, much of it not good. Having read the Nicholson's Guide, I was full of trepidation about doing this solo. The locks are notorious, and here's the first one. Not particularly deep, strange gate paddle mechanism, but it was okay. 103 locks to go. And here's another thing, the fierce crosswears. Although there's nothing particularly fierce about this one today. Welcome to the K&A indeed. I'd read about the traffic light system going through Reading Town Centre and it was not something I'd come across before. I was so busy trying to read the sign that I hit the landing stage. From the stern I still couldn't read the operating instructions. Apparently you have to press the button and wait for the light to go green. Not the best thought out system in the world is it? It can take up to 12 minutes to exit the traffic light system, so be patient if it's on red for a long time. Reading Town Centre has been renovated around the River Kennet. The traffic light system is because the river is shallow and fast flowing, although it didn't appear either when I went through. County lock coming up and the end of the traffic light system. This is another lock to be wary of due to the fast flowing river and weir section next to it. I would normally only open one gate for a broad lock like this, but thought it a good idea to open both so I could power through the current. Continuing out of Reading, I came across people smoking crack under the bridges. Didn't think it was a particularly good place to stop. Now, who thought this was a good idea? This is the lock landing. And the lock itself was absolutely fierce. There were also lesbians making out on the grass next to the lock, which was kind of quite distracting. I was glad to moor up near Fobney Island Nature Reserve that evening. Well, that was quite a first day on the K&A. Didn't do my anxiety issues any good at all. But hey, the sun's out and I've conquered Reading. I left the River Thames yesterday and came through Reading. I had no idea the River Thames could be so beautiful, actually. There were just long, long stretches of river where it was just kind of very rural. It was beautiful, really stunningly beautiful. I just didn't expect it. There were no houses, no roads, just tranquility. Fabulous. It's a beautiful day for cruising. Really hot. The River Kennet runs in and out of the canalised sections, so the water is really clear. I've heard it said that you do the Kennet and Avon once, and then never again. Well, I'm reserving judgement on that, and we shall see. Uh, 
I don't think my boat will fit under there. Yes, panic over. That's a river section and the canal is off to the right. This often happens before a lock. I still haven't mastered these locks yet. There are no ground paddles, just gate paddles which produce an awful lot of turbulence. OK, there's a wide beam coming out of this lock and there's not enough room for him to get by. So I'll have to reverse out to a wider stretch. Fortunately, I'm followed into the lock by a holiday boat so I can stay on board. Through another beautiful windy river section and we arrive at Gaston Lock, a turf sided lock, but more on this type of lock a bit later. After a pleasant evening at Shenfield Mill Visitor Moorings, it's off again, past some work to protect the eroded bank. Solemstead Lock coming up, and lucky me, look at that, there's a boat waiting to go in. in for water at Tile Mill and the holiday boat is waiting to go through the swing bridge and into the lock. Now in the time it took for this boat to come down through the lock I'd filled my water tank with about 500 litres of water. I've never come across a water point with such amazing pressure, probably filled up in less than 15 minutes. So I'm through the swing bridge and into the lock with the same holiday boat. bit of confusion as to which side I should go, but I'm grateful for the help on these locks. <laughs> a lock is always a good place for a bit of banter. A day boat goes by 
They picked a good day for it. It's a scorcher. Left or right? As I get closer, I can just about see the chevrons indicating right. At Ufton Swing Bridge, I close the road and prepare the bridge for the holiday boat. And they wave through an oncoming boat. And eventually, I get to go through myself having held the traffic up for long enough. The railway is rarely far away on the Kennet and Avon. I'm a lucky man living this lifestyle. I feel blessed. The steam engine Bahamas was due to pass through Woolhampton Station. Well, that clearly wasn't it. OK, here she comes. Blimey, blink and you'd miss it. I thought she'd chuff through at a nice steady pace. I'd spent the weekend at Woolhampton and left at 8am on Monday. Woolhampton Lock is particularly difficult, being preceded by a swing bridge and an especially fast-flowing section of river next to the lock landing. As I approached the lock landing, there was a family of four adults fishing there. I asked them, very politely, if they could remove their rods, which they refused to do. I suggested that their rods might get damaged as I intended to moor there, at which point they started to verbally abuse and threaten me. I got off the boat, windless in hand, still being threatened, and managed to tie the boat. I went to set the lock, all the time being very wary that they might actually untie the boat and let it drift in the fierce current. Fortunately, all they did was throw their breakfast at the boat. I was too upset to film anything that day, and moored in Thatcham, next to a one-legged ex-con, who was actually very nice. Watching the reeds flow helped to calm me, reconnect me with what boating is really about.
It was far too hot for cruising, so I thought I'd cool off a bit. What a way to live. Brilliant. Ah. <laughs> hey, I'm not kidding, that is just so refreshing. On my way again, this is the second turf-sided lock. Behind me is the curiously named Monkey Marsh Lock, one of only two locks of its type left in the country. The other one, Gaston Lock, I went through uh, a couple of days ago. The river between Newbury and Reading was made navigable in the early 1700s and that included putting in these turf-sided locks. There were originally 20 locks like this, taking the River Kennet from Newbury and down to Reading. Newbury was an important wool town and they needed the navigation to be able to export the product um, into the larger markets of Reading and London. The sloping turf sides to uh, the upper half of the lock mean that the lock uses an awful lot more water than, let's say, an ordinary vertically sided uh, lock chamber. And it also takes an awful lot longer to fill. The lock should be left empty so that the vegetation on the sloping sides can survive. By now, I'd got the hang of these locks. Rather than keeping your boat near the front of the lock, where you can control it on the centre line, you should tie it loosely to the rear of the lock. Then, slowly, open the paddle on the same side as the boat. The water flow then bounces off the opposite wall of the lock chamber and rebounds onto your boat, holding it against the chamber wall. When the lock is half full, you can then slowly open the other paddle. Well, at least the gangplank's getting plenty of use on the Kenneth Navin. In the outskirts of Newbury now, and more difficult locks to contend with. Just when I thought I was getting to grips with the buggers. Passing through Newbury Wharf, I spotted this famous old working boat, Banstead. Banstead may be known to some of you as the narrowboat used in the 1960s British comedy film The Bargee, starring Eric Sykes and Harry H. Corbett. Also moored here were two boats from the Canal Ministries. The Canal Chaplains provide support for people, no matter what their faith, or even if they've got no faith at all. I waited at the lovely Newbury Bridge, as I could see a boat was exiting the lock ahead. Fuel boat Aussie is moored on the right, along with the record deck, a roving trader selling vinyl. The West Mills part of Newbury is very pretty, and only a five minute walk to the town centre.
I'm glad this isn't a road bridge. It is the slowest swing bridge in the world. I'm keeping to the left as I'm looking out for the visitor moorings. Oh no! Suicidal geese! I have been immensely impressed with Newbury. It's clearly really proud and celebratory of its canal history. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media. Uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.